our adventures of Biggles. Biggles and his air police arrive back in England from the intrigue and bloodshed of the Korean War to find reports of more killing in the British newspapers. They read of native terrorism in Africa, where weird and frightening secret societies are inciting the dark peoples to murder and torture both white and black men. Tony Harvey, a wartime comrade of the Flyers, is one of the victims. A newspaper reports that he's been killed by the dreaded Mau Mau in Kenya. Then Biggles receives a summons to Scotland Yard. He and his police are to track down native terrorists in Africa. Biggles is a little resentful as he faces Assistant Commissioner Raymond. Oh, my folk are tired, sir. We've been working at high pressure for weeks. I think it's asking a bit much to fling them into another job so soon. Oh, don't blame me for it, Biggles or Scotland Yard. The world today's in a state of unrest. It's like a volcano, grumbling and muttering all the time, liable to burst into uncontrolled activity at any minute. So we are expected to sit on top of this volcano and keep it quiet, are we? <laughs> no, not quite that. But you're in the peculiar position of being able to control some of its activity when it does break out. That's a compliment to you, Biggles, but you can blame the state of the world if it's sometimes paid to you at an inconvenient time. Well, don't let's beat around the bush, sir. If something's to be done, I'd rather have the facts and get down to work. Do you remember Tony Harvey? He was flying spits during the war. I read the report in the paper last night. He was murdered by the Mau Mau in Kenya recently. No, that isn't quite correct. Because the exploits of the Mau Mau have been particularly vicious during the last few months, newspapermen are prone to blame them for all African atrocities. Then Harvey wasn't killed by the Mau Mau? No. Actually, he was killed in Rhodesia. It happened about three months ago. Someone must have discovered that he used to be a planter in Kenya, and so, naturally enough, tied his death to the Mau Mau trouble. He'd failed as a planter and taken on a job as game warden in northern Rhodesia, and that's what he was doing when he died. Who did kill him? A character called the Black Elephant. Black Elephant? Dramatic title, isn't it? He's a dramatic bloke. And he's the boy you want us to lay low. That's right. But we'll go back to the beginning of the story. Roughly three years ago, this man's name began to be whispered in terror by African natives. His full title is Sitizulu. The Black Elephant, Lord of Africa. I should say he created the name to impress the natives. I gather he did impress them. He did. By moving about Africa and leaving a trail of brutal murder and theft, he's still doing it. Hasn't he ever been caught? No. He doesn't confine his activities to one area. He may strike in Rhodesia one day. In a week we may hear of him in Uganda. Fortnight later he's as likely to kill someone else in the French or Belgian Congo or Portuguese Angola. Like his namesake, the wild elephant, he makes his kill and then disappears. He's no fool, this said Zulu. He's a most intelligent and dangerous man. Mm. No one knows very much about his beginnings, but he's obviously had some contact with white men because he speaks English fluently. Then, apart from his cunning, he uses physical strength to dominate the natives. He's a giant of a man, a great ugly giant, who dresses in the traditional Zulu leopard skin and ostrich feathers, and uses the weapons of both black men and white for his killing. I want to impress on you, Biggles, that this man is highly dangerous. Because he's a killer? More than that. Because he dreams of one day being the overlord of Africa, ruler of an immense native kingdom in which white men have no part. Well, I'm not interested in the politics of this situation, sir. Oh, neither am I. But for the sake of the natives themselves, the black elephant must be destroyed. His methods are indiscriminate murder and theft. He destroys everyone in his path, black and white. And he leads a big gang of men like himself, men who kill for the sake of killing. Surely it can't be hard to find a big gang like that. A decent body of troops could wipe them out in no time. Africa's an enormous continent, Biggles. Authorities of all states have been chasing him for years, but so far they haven't found it possible to pin him down. And in the meantime, his hold on the native population is growing stronger, and the actions of his gang more ruthless and daring. And you want me to go out with three men and a girl to find this gang and wipe it out? Yes, I know. It's a tremendous task, Biggles, so I shan't order you to do it. But with your mobility and experience in tracking down dangerous characters all over the world, I feel you might succeed where an army would fail. Will you do it? Give me the complete story. Then I'll give my answer. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, naturally, I agreed, providing we have the cooperation of the African authorities. And Raymond promised that. I think the old boy's right. We may be able to track down this gang by air and ultimately run them to earth. I hope you all back me up in this. We'll do whatever you say, Biggles. Personally, we lissies are all for it. Should be a terrific valley show, what? And you, Ginge? Oh, it sounds rather frightening to me. Uh, but don't you dream of leaving me out of it? <laughs> no one will be left out of anything on this assignment. Now, we'll get down to detail. I've been very carefully through the full story with Raymond, and I've found only two angles which might help us. Are they good angles? I think so. Our task is quite straightforward. We have to find Setezulu and see that he's either arrested or destroyed. If we can wipe out his gang at the same time, all well and good. But the black elephant himself is our objective. Oh, we'll do it on our ear, old trout. We'll simply find his headquarters, wait for the blighter to come home, then let fly at him with our jolly old catapults. Well, so far, there's been no suggestion that he has a headquarters. But I think he has. Is this one of the angles you were talking about? Yes. You see, his practice when he raids a native village is to burn it down, kill all the occupants, and make off with their cattle. African natives measure their wealth by cattle, don't they, Biggles? That's right. And as Setazulu has been stealing cattle consistently for three years, he must be an extremely wealthy man now. Do we know where he's been selling the cattle, old trout? He hasn't. And that's why I think this is a good angle. Somewhere in Africa, there must be an immense herd of cattle belonging to the black elephant. If we look for that herd, sooner or later we'll find it, and then find Setazulu. A herd that size shouldn't be hard to spot from the air. I don't bank too much on it. There are thousands of herds of cattle in Africa, but it is a lead. And uh, what's your other angle, Biggles? A very important one. We can have the services of a guide who is one of the very few people to have seen Setazulu face to face. And lived. Exactly. His name is Mishu. He's a Maasai warrior who was acting as gun bearer to Tony Harvey when he was killed. Mishu escaped and reported the incident. Raymond will see that he's waiting for us at Kampala. That's the town in Uganda where we'll make our headquarters. How soon do we leave, Biggles? Just as soon as we can organize two or three aircraft, Pat. Our job is to prevent the black elephant killing more people. And we won't do it unless we go to work immediately. that we are in Africa to catch the black elephant, Mishu? Perhaps to kill him? Yes, Bwana. I was told of this. Do you think we'll be able to do it? Black elephant must be killed. That's how we feel. I understand that you know most of the native tribes in Central Africa, that you can speak with them and that they trust you. Mishu is a mighty hunter. He is known, Bwana. That's one of the reasons I want you with us. The other, of course, is that you know as much as anyone about Setazulu. Do you agree to help us hunt this black elephant? It is my wish to help you. I have sworn to kill Setazulu. You know how dangerous it will be? I have sworn to kill Setazulu. Good. I'll discuss him with you later, Mishu. First, I want to send my people to fly over the land and become accustomed to it. Will you ask them to come to the hut? Better turn back, Ginch. Biggles didn't mean us to fly as far as northern Rhodesia. He told us to keep our eyes open for big mobs of cattle, didn't he? That was a secondary consideration. His main idea in this flight is for us to have a look at the country we'll be working in. Well, aren't we? It's no use just looking at Uganda when we're likely to be chasing this Setazulu blighter down in Rhodesia. Well, we don't know where we'll be chasing him yet. Turn back, Ginch. Biggles will think we're in trouble. All right, we'll fly to the next belt of forest and then turn. We've seen so much of this grassland that I'm dying for the sight of a few trees again. We'll see plenty of plain country in Africa. This is what they call the felt. Ginch, that figure moving through the grass. Isn't that a man? That's a white man by George. And he looks pretty groggy. He's trying to wave to us. Put down, Ginch. You can land anywhere there. Yes. That poor blighter needs help. There he is. I can see him lying in the grass ahead of us. Yes, must have passed out. <gasps> Don't look at him, Pat. I've seen him already. He's been cut to pieces. By a knife, wasn't it, Ginger? 
Uh, something like that. Uh, He's still conscious. Uh, Give him a sip from your water bottle. And, uh, all of them there. He got all of us. Black elephant got all of us. The black elephant got all of us. Hear that, Pat? The, black the bl black elephant's done this. He struck again. <laughs> Pat and Jin stare in horror at the white man's dreadful wounds. This is how the black elephant treats his victims. Can the dying man help the air police in their quest? What lies ahead of them in the terrifying jungles of Central Africa? This enthralling story will unfold in the next exciting chapter of The Air Adventures of Big <laughs> of Biggles. Biggles and his air police have been sent on a new assignment to Africa where a savage native outlaw, Zeta Zulu, the Black Elephant, has been terrorizing black and white people alike. Through murder and theft, he is attempting to set himself up as overlord over all Africa, and Biggle's task is to track him down and destroy him. The flyer set up their headquarters at Kampala, the capital of Uganda, where Biggles engages as guide, the native Mishu, one of the few living men who have seen the Black Elephant face to face. During a reconnaissance flight over northern Rhodesia, Ginger and Pat see a white man staggering through the long grass. He is seriously injured, so they put down to investigate. When they find the man, he is barely conscious, but he murmurs the name Black Elephant. What about the Black Elephant? Tell us about him. This is important. He's passed out again, Ginger. He's still breathing. He isn't dead. He can't last long. Not wounded like that. Lighter. He's in a shocking state. I wonder what caused the wounds. I thought he'd been slashed by a knife at first. But a knife wouldn't make those great holes. Those are spear wounds. He's been chopped about by native assegais. I suppose the black elephant did do it. There's only one way to find out. I'll give him some more water. That may bring him round again. Be easy with him, Ginge. Uh, he's coming round. Uh, it's all right, I old are. man. We're friends. Huh? Huh? Friends. You get him. Get him for me. Hmm? Black elephant. Uh, the black elephant did this to you? Yeah, yeah. Kill the others. Said I was dead, too. Left me lying there. Uh, and you managed hmm? to come back after they'd gone? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, man. Blacks gave me food. Wouldn't let me stay. Frightened the black elephant. Uh, How long ago did the black elephant attack you? <sighs> maybe a week, maybe ten days. Can't, can't, can't remember. Where did it happen? Can't, can't remember. Black elephant, dozens of men, dozens of can't, can't remember. Black you elephant. must remember this. It, it may be vital. Uh, Where did it happen? Uh, black elephant. Where did he attack you? Please try to think. Gently with him, Ginge. Uh, you lunger. Yeah, you lunger. Yeah, Morton stopped the first. Big native, big, big, big native giant, giant. Who were the others? Uh, you better tell me who was in your party. Black elephant, the devil. He sees the de He's a... Uh, uh, uh. Quickly, tell me. It's too late, Ginge. He's gone. <laughs> Hmm. 
Before I buried him, I took his passport and wallet. There they are, Biggles. They'll help to identify the party. Joseph Lawrence Kennedy from San Francisco. Sounds as if he was an American tourist on a hunting trip. Pity someone didn't warn him that the black elephant does the hunting in this country. He won't for much longer. Ginch, take these papers across to the airways office. They'll be able to contact Lusaka in northern Rhodesia and find out who was with Kennedy on the trip. Roger, I'll stay there till the information comes through. Now, let's see how we can make use of this. Sizzling sausages, old trout. There's only one valley way. What's that? We simply trundle down to Ubunga, find this set of Zulu bird, and exterminate the blighter. Nothing's ever been more obvious to us lissies. These murders took place a week or ten days ago. By now, Seta Zulu and his gang will be hundreds of miles away. I've been trying to impress this on you all. He strikes, then disappears, to turn up again in a, in a totally different part of Africa. In other words, the last place we should look for him is where he's been seen recently. That's it. We can look anywhere in Africa but there. Well, that makes it frightfully easy, what? We just burble out the kites, have a scout round Africa, and bring in the trout before tea. Simple. It's far from simple. But it's not as impossible as it seems. Remember my theory that the black elephant will ultimately give himself away through the movement of cattle. Well, there wouldn't have been cattle involved in this last stunt. No, Pat. But he may have been moving cattle when the Americans crossed his path. That's enough to make him kill, isn't it, Michu? Yes, Buana. Black elephant kill all who come close to him. All right. The blight is liable to be anywhere a few hundred miles north, south, east, or west of the Uwalanga. Well, that doesn't exactly help us, what? I think he'll be north of it. What do you base that on, Biggles? Firstly, he doesn't usually operate below northern Rhodesia. Then, if he's moving cattle, he'll need water. He'll almost certainly follow a chain of rivers, lakes, or water holes when he's driving them to his hideout. There are quite a few chains of water in Africa, Biggles. I know. But there's one particularly good one. Now, look at this wall map. Here's Ulunga, see? Yes, it's just at the foot of Lake Tanganyika. Yes, and above that is Lake Lake Kivu. And above that again, Lake Albert. And across to the east, Lake Victoria. The entire lake system covers over a thousand miles. Now, isn't it likely that anyone moving cattle would take advantage of that? I say, LB, that narrows it down somewhat. All we have to do is to scoot up and down those barry lakes till we find him. Till we find the cattle. Those we may see from the air. The men will stay under cover. There's still a difficulty, Biggles. We don't know which side of the lakes to look. We'll cover both, if necessary. But if we had some other clue, some other point of indicating his line of march, it'd, it'd help a lot. Michu help you, Buana. Yes, Michu? Men of my tribe, Bilumwa, live on Tanganyika side of lake. They tell if Setezulu come this way. Well, I didn't think the tribesmen would talk to white men about him. Not tell white men. Tell Michu. I listen to talk. Watch for tracks. What's the ground like where your people live, Michu? Plenty flat plain with grass for cattle. Same like this. Then we could put a kite down there, Biggles. How about us taking Michu down there right away? We could make it by dark. All right, Pat. Ginge and Bertie can take him down in the mosquito. Put in a tent, Bertie, so that you can spend the night there while he's questioning his people. Oh, the jolly old boy scout egg. What? Oh, well, we best get cracking. Otherwise, we'll be putting down in the valley night. Oh, here's Ginge coming back. Wait till we hear what he's discovered. Uh, we got through, Biggles. Did they know about Kennedy at Lusaka? Yes, a party of them went up into the north country about a month ago. Kennedy, another American, a professional hunter, and some native porters. And not one of them escaped? Apparently not, Pat. They haven't been heard of in Lusaka since they left. The local police are sending out a party right away to search for their bodies. And while they're doing that... We'll search for their murderers. Bertie, you can tell Ginger our plan's on the way. All right, get cracking. This is the place, Buana. Close to here, I find my people. You sure of that old lobster? Jolly old ground doesn't look the same from up here as it does when you're trundling along on the hoof, you know. Miss, you know, there is lake in front past trees. On that side is road. Ilumbwa tribe live near lake and road. Oh, well, as thou sayest, so shall it be done, old boot polish. We lose downwards. Keep your eyes open for ant hills, rocks and such like, will you, Ginge? 
I'd hate to do our kite to land on Schnozzle. Roger. Well, it looks pretty right anywhere down there, I think. Yes, my dear old Aunt Ermintrude always warned me to look before I land. She didn't once when she was taking a water jump. Got most frightfully wet, poor old darling. Uh, when we land, Miss Hugh, shall we go with you to the native camp? No, Buana. White men come to Kral, all black men know about it. Maybe they tell Setodulo. We can't have that happen, by Jove. We'll uh, toss up the old tent in the sward down there. Well, shall we be safe in a tent in the open like that? Safe, Buana? Uh, yes. Uh, what about the wild animals? Oh, wild animals not hurt. Always Miss Shaw lived near wild animals. Yes, and you've got a few scars to prove it. I'd just as soon keep my youthful complexion, thanks. Oh, there don't seem to be any obstructions, Bertie. Oh, no, but you might have warned me about the valley bumps. Make me feel as if I got the hiccups. Ah, well, we'll leave the old kite nosing into these trees. Then if a rhinoceros spots it, he'll think it's a daffodil. Right, out you hop, Trouts. Now, you buzz off and confer with um, Uncle Bopper Popple and Aunt Mipper Pipple, Miss you. And um, we'll whack up the tent while it's still alive. Miss you find you here in morning, Buana? Oh, absolutely. We'll be huddled over a whopping big fire just by the kite. Uh, providing we haven't been trampled to death by elephants during the night, but black or otherwise. Oh, Bertie. Uh, Bertie, wake up. Oh, go to sleep, hell bean, can't you? Ulysses don't care for idle chatter after midnight. Bertie, there's a lion outside the tent. Oh, nonsense. We left a fire deliberately to scare the blighters away, didn't we? They won't burble around while that's burning. Now, can you just go back to sleep? Uh, sizzling sausages. Now do you believe me? But, but, but the fire! The fire's gone out. There is a lion outside the tent and nothing to scare him away. <laughs> Both men peer through the tent flap, but in the pitch blackness nothing can be seen. Will the animal attack them? Is Setazulu close by? Don't miss the next thrilling chapter of The Air Adventures of Big O. of Biggles. In search of the black elephant, the Negro outlaw who has been terrorizing Africa, Ginge and Bertie land the mosquito near Lake Tanganyika, while Mishu, their native guide, moves into the forest to find some of his tribesmen and question them about the movements of the black elephant. Ginge and Bertie prepare to spend the night in a tent on the edge of the open country. But Ginge finds he cannot settle down. Africa is a wild and dangerous country, and the lonely night is particularly terrifying. His fears are justified when he hears a rumbling snarl outside the tent. The fire has gone out, and not far away a lion is moving in the blackness. I... I can't see a belly thing. He's there, though. You can sense him, but uh, sort of slinking around. Oh. Sausages. By, 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 by Jingo, you're, you're right, Elby. With the fire out, there's nothing to frighten him away. Oh, well, well, hi, I, we listeners will frighten him. Just you wait till Harriet moves into action. Oh, no, no, Bertie, it might work. 
It'll only draw attention to us. I've got a feeling that'll happen anyway. I'll fetch my rifle. That's the only way to fix him. Now, old trout, you can't see the belly brute. How do you expect to pot him with your pea shooter? We just can't stay here and wait for him to attack Bertie. Oh, uh, by, by Jingo, boy, we can't. Absolutely not. Um, look, Ginge, there's some paper in the corner of the tent. Uh, uh, that packing from the food box. What useful paper be? Well, plenty. We can light it. And I've heard tell that a lion won't attack directly into a fire. Oh, I get you. Uh, I'll bring some over. <gasps> oh, don't waste any time, old sausage. I think that was closer. Yes, yes, I can see him. Quick, quick, your gun, Ginge. Bring your gun. What the blaze is it? That, that, that wasn't you, was it? No fear. I hadn't picked up the gun. Well, well it frightened old Leo away anyway. He's trundling off in no uncertain style. Uh, are you sure he's gone? Didn't you hear that last bleat? When I when I uh, bellowed for the gun, the blighter spotted me. He was only a couple of yards away. Then a couple of rifle shots came from somewhere else and frightened him off. I wonder where they did come from, Bertie. Oh, baked potatoes, how should I know? There are all sorts of strange bods waffling round the old African continent. Could have been any of the trouts. Personally, we Lissies are inclined to think it was some hunter potting for a spot of breakfast. Well, lucky for us, he let fly when he did. The shots weren't fired at the lion, were they? Oh, I don't think so, old bean. They seem to come from the other side of that rise. I say, can you see what I see? Cast the old peepers towards the skyline. What? Good grief. Bodies wandering along in single file. At least a dozen of the blighters. They are the boys who scared off old Leo. Yes, but but who are they? Well, from their jolly old bibs and tuckers, they're obviously natives. But which, which particular ones, I, I'm not a bally clue. Natives don't usually hunt at night, do they? Well, not so far as I know. Unless they're hunting each other or some such skullduggery. If they were, they wouldn't get themselves away by firing a rifle. Oh, well, who cares, old bean? They've scared off old Leo the lion and they're not hunting us. So I suggest we grab a spot more of the old shot eye. No, they don't seem to have noticed us. They're just moving along the ridge. Bertie, they're moving from south to north. Oh, north, south, east, west, each has something of the best. In the words of the classics, so, um, Bally, what, old bean? Biggles expects Seta Zulu and his men to be moving from south to north. Seta Zulu? Sizzling sausages! You don't mean that's the, the the black belly elephant? I'm sure of it. We were sent here because Biggles thought this might be somewhere on the line of the march. He was right. I say. <coughs> I mean, uh, I say. Keep your voice down, you Eric. Do you want them to find us here? Well, you don't think it went up on purpose, do you? What are we going to do about this, Ginge? For the moment, keep our fingers crossed and hope they don't see us down here. Yes, but after they've passed. I mean to say this is the purpose of the entire jolly old expedition. We've traced Zeta Zulu. Now we must rustle up the rest of the gang and exterminate the blighter. In other words, here's where we contact old Biggles. What? We can't. Mishu isn't back. No, neither he is. Well, all right, we'll just squat around till he comes. Bertie, that might mean all night. Oh, as it might, old bean. Well, nothing much we can do about it. I mean to say we haven't a clue where to look for the old tin of boot polish. But, but the animals. What will we do if the lion comes back? We don't light a fire with Seta Zulu about. Oh, we'll grab our pop guns and sit and hope. That's what you need in an operation of this sort. Positively oodles of hope. Hello, Biggles. Are you still awake? Haven't you got a clock in there? Oh, hello, Pat. Come in. Don't you know the time? It's well after midnight. Surely there's no need for you to be working until this hour. Yes, there is. If I'm to lay this black elephant low, I must know everything there is to know about him. Unfortunately, there's darn little information to hand. What have you been working on? This. It's the file on the outrages he's committed to date. I've been going through it to see if there's any sort of pattern to his activities. Is there? Yes, a vague one. He seems to work in a great circle, striking at intervals as he moves around it. But there's one most interesting point. There's always a lull following any raid far to the north. Well, maybe I'm not much of a detective, but that doesn't suggest anything to me. Ah, but it, it does suggest something, Pat. I felt all along that his headquarters is in the north. Now, this confirms it. He returns home after this great circle of movement, and he rests there before setting out again on his next raiding trip. You seem quite convinced that he has headquarters. But, well, we haven't any direct evidence of it, you know. But he, he must have, Pat. 
He's been stealing cattle in large numbers for three years, and apparently hasn't been disposing of them. Now, these animals must be somewhere, and wherever that place is, the black elephant will return to it from time to time. Find the cattle, either at their base or on the move, and we find him. According to this chart you've drawn, he moves terrific distances in very short times. He wouldn't do that if he was lugging mobs of cattle around with him. I don't suggest that Setazulu moves them personally, but he has quite a big gang of cutthroats working with him, don't forget. My theory is that he strikes, commits his murders and so forth, and then sends the cattle on to base with some of his blokes, while he moves on to the next reading point. That means that he'll never be very far from the cattle, and always moving around a great circle. At the moment, moving north, eh? Mm. Well, I think that's enough deduction for one night, Biggles. How about leaving the detective work to Ginger and Bertie while we get some sleep? I'll see you in the morning. What's the time, Bertie? Uh, it's nearly five o'clock, old trout. Oh. Dawn's just sprouting. You can grab some more shut eye if you like. Well, this will keep guard till Missy comes. Oh, I, I'm awake now. I'll stay with you. Uh, nothing been happening? Well, some hyenas came oozing this way, but I tossed a clod of dirt at them and they trundled off again, that's all. No further sign of uh, set of Zulu? No, not a quiver, old top. The blight is probably still drifting onward some miles to the north of us. Oh, seems we have required stay after all. Uh, this part of it may be quiet, but... Bertie. Bertie, there's someone out there. Where? Coming across the felt. And he's seen us. He's heading straight for us. Well, then it doesn't matter if we give ourselves away, what? Hold hard there, sausage. Who are you? And what do you belly well want? Get that mess, show, Bruna. No, not show. Sure. Oh, sizzling sausages now. Put a sprint on, Monsieur. We've been waiting for you. There's news. The black elephant is here. Miss shall see him. You've seen him? Where? Men of my tribe see him while hunting. They tell Miss he comes. I move to his path and follow him to his camp. Baked potatoes. I didn't know the blighter had camped near here. We saw some of his blokes, but they were moving to the north. It is there they make their camp. Not far from here, Buana. Miss wait until the day comes, but still they do not move. So I come to tell you. Thank goodness you did, Miss we thought we were safe. My Jeff, we must tell the old lord and master about this forthwith. We'll get cracking at once. Absolutely. Now look here. You two trouts grab the tail of the kite and turn around so that we'll have a straight takeoff. I'll strike the tent and pack the gear aboard. Keep moving, old sausages. Time's the jolly old lesson for this. Oh, she's right, Bertie. Anything else to go aboard? Uh, no, thanks, old bean. Only us now. Now we'll just... Oh! Just think, sausages, not again. It is the game's box, Buana. See it standing on the veldt? Someone is shooting at it. Well, that belly deer? I say, that's not far away. It's been hit, and it's coming this way. Oh, the black elephant is coming from the trees. Oh, not only the black elephant, but his whole valley tribe. They've seen us, Bertie. That blasted deer's given us away. <laughs> A huge native leads a dozen of his men from the clump of timber and towards the flyers. How will they survive this meeting with the Black Elephant? There'll be thrills and action in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. <laughs> of Biggles. At 
dawn, Ginger and Bertie see a figure moving silently across the long grass. But it is Mishu returning from his visit to the native crowd. However, his news gets them cracking at once. Santa Zulu and his gang are camped in the forest not far from the Englishman's camp. Hurriedly, they swing the plane round so that his nose is pointing to open country. They strike the tent, load the stores, and then a shot rings out. An antelope stands shuddering fearfully in the long grass. Another shot wounds it and sends the animal galloping across the plain. Immediately, natives appear from behind trees. They have seen the flyers. We fight, Juana. No oh, sizzling sausages, no. There must be a dozen of the blighters. We could put up a bit of a scrap. No, no fear. They're coming on the run. Into the kite trouts and sprint. You first, Mishu. Into the back. And be careful of that bally ass guy. You know, he skewered me with it. Miss so sorry, Juana. Right. Right, slam the hatch, Ginge. Now, now, if only they'll keep those belly rifles quiet. And if only your engines don't seize, they're stone cold, Bertie. I can't help that old trout. Don't waste time revving. Those blokes are right in front of us. We'll scatter them. Places are you doing? Don't yaw like that. I had to. There was a belly anthill in the way. Black elephant, nothing way, Buana. <laughs> he moves. Yes, he sprinted all right. But we were only just in time. Look out! Sizzling sausages! The lion is standing up in front of us. I can't swerve at this speed. Pull on the stick! You'll have to, Bertie. Lift up! Well, we'll try, old bean. Oh, I know it. No, straight up. We're going to stall. No, we won't. Keep leveling out. There. Now you're right. Oh. Oh. Nearly came an awful bump on your nether regions then, Michel. Michel must understand, Juana. Well, to dodge the old lion, we sort of took off before we were going fast enough. That meant the jolly old nozzle tilted up in the air too soon, and the kite wondered for a minute whether or not it had slid backwards onto its tail. Would have been awfully uncomfortable if it had. Uh, particularly as we would have pranked within a few feet of the lion. That must have been the bloke who was hanging around last night, Bertie. Oh, I say, don't be so bally cheerful. That means he was out there all the time. He probably was. <laughs> Still, he didn't attack us. And the old black elephant didn't skewer us, and we didn't prank. So we're still alive for them all to happen again another day. It's a great life, what? <laughs> Are you sure it was the black elephant? Monsieur Chauvoana, Monsieur see black elephant another time. Monsieur wouldn't make a mistake, Algy. And let us be absolutely clear on this point, old Bean. Neither would we Liffies. Old Harriet distinctly opened one eye and said, The black elephant, sizzling sausages, take me back to the lord and master. <laughs> <laughs> At least it didn't frighten the nonsense out of you, Bertie. Oh, that's a permanent disease. Nothing would frighten them. Oh, I say. Well, don't let's waste time chattering about it. Has the mosquito plenty of fuel, Bertie? Oh, enough for a few hours yet, old bean. Then we'll ship straight back and look for Santa Zulu. You can guide me. Algy, you bring Ginge in the Proctor. Roger. Will we take guns? My word, yes. Although I don't intend to make any ground attack yet. If we see him, we might give him a rattle with the mosquito's cannon. I'd give him more than a rattle. He's done plenty of hunting so far. Let's give him a taste of what it feels like to be hunted. We'll find him first. Pet? Yes, Biggles? Will I bring the Oster? No, that old kite's too slow to keep up with us. Stay by the radio in the airline office. If we need you, we'll contact you. Roger. Right, old scramble blokes. Setter Zulu will be on the move by now. We must find him before he's moved too far. Are we on the right course, Bertie? Well, I, I'm sure we are, old bean. And yet... What's up? Well, that valley of Lake Tanganyika. I can't see it yet. Perhaps we aren't close enough. Oh, baked potatoes, oh boy. It's the longest valley lake in the world. You can see it for miles. Well, even so... No, oh, it's all right, old bean. There's a mist ahead of us. That's blotting it out. A mist? At this time of day? That's unusual. Well, it's there, all right. You can see it quite clearly now. Look, it's spreading all over the valley place. That isn't mist. It's smoke. By jingo, so it is. 
I wonder where that's coming from. The grass, probably. Natives quite often burn off dead grass to encourage new growth. Well, perhaps they do. But isn't it somewhat of a coincidence that they should burn off the valley stuff right across old Set of Zulu's path? Is that where it's coming from? I'm afraid there's no doubt, old bean. I know exactly where we are now. The black elephant and these boys are under that smoke. And they're trundling north just as fast as they can bally well trundle. Oh, confound it. The cunning blighters tricked us completely. Look here. Couldn't we trundle up to the northern end of the smoke and wait for them to come out of it? It's moving all the time. They're firing the grass ahead of them as they go. Oh, big bally potatoes. No, we haven't a hope of spotting the bounders. Not on this trip, anyway. Make contact with Algy and tell him to return to base. We'll figure out what can be done back there. As far as I can see, he's found a way to beat us. While he's on the move, he'll keep the fires going, and we'll never be able to locate him. Yes, by Jove. These belly fires will have us licked. On the contrary, if he keeps up that game, he's the one who will be licked. How do you make that out? Well, the smoke would give us his position, and that's the last thing he'd want us to know. He could afford to pull that trick this morning because we already knew where he was. When he thinks he's given us the slip, he'll think twice before even lighting a cooking fire. Not only that, Pickles. Once he reaches the rainforest on the lower slopes of the Matumba and the Ruinsori Ranges, he won't be able to find the country. If he gets that far, we'll have the dickens of a job to find him anyway. These forests look terribly thick from the air. Don't worry. He couldn't get through the forest, not with a herd of cattle. He'll have to follow native paths or game tracks. So we'll watch them. But where, Biggles? If we let him out of our sight now, goodness knows where we'll pick him up again. I told you the other day that I'm pretty confident I know his line of march. He'll follow the lakes. Tanganyika, Kivu, Edward, George and Albert. Then at the far end, he may follow water for the sake of his cattle. Uh, that's the valley question, old bean. How far north? I worked that out with Algy this morning. I think somewhere to the north of Uganda. Every time he's disappeared for a long time, he has been last heard of in that area. I'm confident that his headquarters is up there. Then what do we do? Uh, look for his headquarters or try to catch him before he reaches there. Well, naturally, we'll try to catch him as soon as possible. We'll look for him when he thinks he's safe again and tries to make up for lost time. What do you think about it, Michu? One is right. Black elephant hide. Then he think he's safe and come out. But maybe Michu help Wana find this... this is... Do you mean the headquarters? Ah, yes, Wana. Michu know top part of Uganda well. Know the people and know the country. If we shall go up there and travel alone, maybe he find out about about the headquarters. That's a good scheme, Michaud. But you won't travel up there alone. We'll fly you. Is there anywhere up there we can land a plane? Latunga. Native kraal at Latunga. Near kraal is landing place for aeroplanes. That's right. There's a government landing field there. I've seen it on the map. It's purely an emergency field, but there's a rest house there, too. I don't think any white folk live there. No white man at Latonga. That can be our contact point, Michu. We'll fly you to Latonga, and then you can move about the country alone. Find out anything you can, and then come back to the rest house. We'll send up a kite from time to time to see if you're back. Okay? Yes, Moana. You look after it, Algy. You and Pat take him up in the, uh, after lunch in the Oster. And keep your eyes open on the way. You never know what's likely to happen on a stunt like this. You remember what Biggle said before we left, Pat? What was that? Anything is likely to happen on a stunt like this. He was right. Look over to the horizon. Storm clouds. Algy, they look fast. They are. There's a cyclone coming. <laughs> Algy squeezes every ounce of speed from the little plane in an effort to reach the Tonga before the cyclone hits. Can he avoid flying through the storm? What excitement lies ahead of the flyers in this northern corner of Uganda? Don't miss the thrills in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles.
adventures of Biggles. Flying Mishu to the native village of Latonga in northern Uganda, Algy and Pat see an ominous sign on the horizon. Black clouds are beginning to mass against the sky. In tropical areas, this could mean a fearful storm, perhaps a cyclone. Algy coaxes even more speed than the little oster and anxiously scans the ground for sign of the landing field. Is it far from here, Mishu? No, Buana. We're close now. But I don't suppose you can point out the actual field for us, can you? Maybe. Miss should not know till they say. There'll be some sort of marking, Pat. All I'm hoping is that we see it soon. The storm doesn't seem to be traveling fast in this direction. We might miss it. But if we don't, it'll carry us over into the mountain country. Some of those peaks are over 15,000 feet. Yes, Mount Stanley and Ruin Zori. Algy, there it is. The field? I think so. There's a big white circle on the ground. Is that the Tonga, Mishu? Yes, Buana. There is the kraal, and in the trees by the place where the aeroplane is sleeping hot. For oh, white man. There's some breeze about already. See the wind sock? It's not enough to stop us landing. Oh, no, we'll put down all right. But we shan't waste any time down there. You clear on your job, Michu? Yes, Buana. Michu move among native people. Ask about big press where black elephants keep cattle. Find out anything at all about him. What he usually does when he's in this part of the world. Where he goes. Anything at all. Then come back to the rest hut here at the Tonga. And wait for one of us to pick you up. Yes, Buana. And be careful you don't tangle with Zetazulu yourself, Mishu. We want you back again. Zetazulu not kill Mishu. No man kill Mishu. He might be warrior. Be a bushman first and run away if you see trouble coming. That way you'll live long. Hoist open the hatch, Pat, and let him out. There you are, Mishu. Goodbye. And good luck, old son. Make sure we see you back here. Goodbye, Werner. Miss Shock, come back soon. Right up, Pat. Close up. As soon as he's clear of the kite, we'll take off again. There's someone coming across the field. It's a white man. I thought there weren't any white men here. He's beckoning to us. Oh, confound him. What the blazes does he want? We'd better wait until he gets over. It might be important. All right. But he can jump in the lake if he thinks we're going to stay here nattering for long. Hello there. I thought you were going to fly off without saying good day. That's about all we've time to say. Oh, nonsense. You're coming over to the rest house for a cup of tea. No, sorry, old man. We don't do that. There's a storm coming. That won't be here for over hours. It may just drift up and down the horizon for a while and then wander away. They often do in this part of the world. It looks a bad one, though. Well, it doesn't matter how bad it is, does it, if you're not in it? You know, you're the first white people I've seen for a fortnight. I'm not going to lose you as quickly as this. Come over with me? Well, I... We might as well, Algy, providing we don't stay long. All right, five minutes, that's all. That's all it'll be. I put the billy on when I heard your plane. Oh, my name's Simmons, by the way. This is Miss Kendall, and I'm Algy Lee. Yes, you see, I'm a game ranger. That takes me all over these outlandish places. I like the life, but it's darn lonely at times. If you work this area, you may know something of the Black Elephants gang. Said a Zulu, his blokes. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard about them, of course, but I haven't struck them myself. That's a pity. We're hunting them. Hunting them? You've taken on a job. Those boys kill. So do we, if it's necessary. Me? I'd rather hunt poachers and wild animals. They're safer. Poachers? Yes. There's a lot of poaching in these parts. The natives kill off elephant and rhino for the ivory. There's always a market for that amongst crooked traders. That must be a big job. A single white man covering hundreds of square miles looking for blokes who've killed a few animals. It's sizable. The natives don't help either. They'll never report each other. You know something? I think the poaching in this area is organized. It's my theory there's a white man at the back of it all. <laughs> we'll leave you to track him down while we look for our black man. Is that why you're here now? Oh, no. No, this is another side of my job. There have been reports of an ambitious leopard in this locality... He's gone past the taste for cattle, and he likes humans now. Quite a few of the natives have made good meals for him lately. Are you on his trail yet? Well, not really. 
I've seen signs of him, of course, but leopards are darn hard to track down. And dangerous, too, if they are man-eaters. Oh, it seems to me these jungles are full of dangers. They are, miss. Never underrate the African jungle. Suffering cats, look at that wind. It's come up while we've been gassing. The storm. We'll have to go now, Simmons. Come along, Pat. Goodbye, Mr. Simmons. Thanks for the tea. Hey, oh. So long, folks. It's been good to talk to you. I hope you'll be all right up there. Here on my bunk, Ginge. I'm being just plain lazy for half an hour. There's a storm up north, Biggles. What's that? How do you know? Bertie and I were over at the airways office when a kite came in from the Sudan. The pilot said he'd skirted a terrific electrical storm that was sweeping in from the sea. Did he give you the location of it? It was coming across Kenya when he saw it. But by now, it'll be right over the north of Uganda. Caesar's ghost. Pat and Algy will be bang in the middle of it. Where's Bertie? He went to the radio room. He's going to see if they can make contact with Algy. We'll join him. If they strike a tropical storm in the Oster, they may be in trouble. Real trouble. Algy. All I can pick up on the radio is static. We'll never make contact through this. Never mind. They couldn't help us if we did. We're in this dashed storm. We'll have to get out of it. Can I help? No, thanks, Pat. It's just a matter of trying to keep the darn thing on an even keel. When these blasts of wind hit us, they nearly wrenched the stick out of my hand. Did you top up the fuel before we left Kampala, Algy? Oh, no, I didn't think of it. Good grief, don't tell me the juice is low. I'm afraid it is. We'll have to switch on to the auxiliary tank in a minute. Oh, confound it all. Why was I fool enough to take off from that strip? Don't blame yourself for that. You didn't know it would be as bad as this. You should always expect it to be bad. By Jupiter, it is. Do you realize we're being blown right off our course? I know. To the west. Towards those whopping great mountains. If we get amongst those in this storm... Well, we'd better not, that's all. There's no sign of any mountains yet. And we're still flying at only 7,000 feet. Oh, the altimeter doesn't mean a thing. It was set for Kampala. Maybe we're only 7,000 feet above the level of the strip there, but Mount Stanley is 17,000 above it. We'll look pretty if we're anywhere near that, won't we? Unfortunately, visibility's so bad we can't tell. Those are probably clouds out there, but... But they might have rocks in them. All we can do is plug on and hope for the best. See the petrol gauge? Zero. We're out of juice. Nearly. We must be near those ranges now. Algy, swing away. What the? That big mass, it's a mountain. Good grief, I thought it was a cloud. Oh. Blimey, Charlie. We were nearly into that one. It's enormous. We're still flying alongside it. Hello. The petrol's finished. That's that. Can we glide, Algy? Not for long in this storm. And for all I know, the ground may be only ten feet below us. It's further than that. I can see it coming up now. Trees! That's going to be nice. We might be all right if we sink onto them. If we do, I'm pulling back on the stick as hard as I can now. If I pull any more, we'll stall. It's coming, Algy. Switch off the ignition. That's right. Lift your knees, Pat, and cover your face. Here we go. Despite Algy's skill, the helpless aircraft rips into the treetops, tilts onto its nose, then sinks slowly back. Have the flyers been injured? Where are they? And how will they return to their friends? Listen again for thrills in the next chapter of The Air Adventures of Big Old.
the air adventures of Figgles. are delayed at the Latonga airstrip, and by the time they take off in the Oster, the storm is approaching fast. It soon catches the little plane in its full force. Algy has to fight every inch of the way to prevent disaster, but he cannot prevent the storm blowing him miles to the west of his course, and he can do nothing when the fuel runs low. They are in wild mountain country when the tanks run dry. A huge dusky outline towers over them as Algy allows the plane to sink to the ground. He lifts the nose to pancake the little machine and the trees float up towards them and then... Pat! Pat, are you hurt? No, I, I came an awful whack against the instrument panel. But I'm all right. <clears throat> me too. There's a bit of a cut on my forehead you can fix for me afterwards. But we were both darned lucky. Oh, no, Algie. You knew the crash was coming and you prepared for it. No one could have brought the kite down better than you did. Oh, thanks. And that doesn't help us much, does it? My word, it does. We're alive. We wouldn't have been if we'd crashed nose down. All right, I'm a whiz of a flyer. But that doesn't alter the fact that we're stuck amongst the trees on the side of a whopping great mountain in the middle of a storm. I can't fly us out of this spot. There's nothing we can do, Algy. Not while the storm's still going. When it dies down, I suggest we try to make radio contact with Kampala. Yes, we'll do that. But in the meantime, this cabin's as good a place as any to stay. At least we won't get quite so wet here as we would outside. No, it's the same as when we were flying. All I can pick up are the splutters of the storm. We're still too close to it. I'll try again. I might get through eventually. Now oh, you'll waste the battery. That radio's our only link with Biggles, Pat. Let's keep it serviceable. It might be morning before we can use it again, Algy. It's growing terribly dark. Then we'll wait till morning. Biggles wouldn't be able to do anything tonight, anyway. In the morning, we can see where we are and set about getting ourselves ready. Oh, it's useless, old bean. The only sound's that belly static. Never mind, Bertie. We wouldn't be able to do anything tonight anyway. Not do anything, but by George we will. We're going out to look for them. Where? Well, between here and Latonga. Ginge, in a severe tropical storm, that little oster would be tossed about like a leaf. According to reports, the storm was severe, so we can take it for granted that they've been blown miles off their course. Oh, even so, old sausage, we can't very well leave them there. I mean to say almost anything could have happened to the poor old trout. No matter what's happened, we can do nothing about it tonight. There's no moon, so visibility would be nil. If we went out, we'd simply burn up petrol and our nerves without seeing a thing. Then what are we going to do? Sleep. So that we'll be fit for anything that cracks tomorrow. We'll take shifts to stay in the radio room in case a message does come through. But apart from that, we'll relax until we can really do something to help Patton Algy. down here, Algy. The view's heavenly in daylight. I couldn't care less about the view. I want to get back to civilization. Is the radio working? Yes. I'm trying to get through now. Hold it, Pat. Are you through? It's Biggles. It's only faint, but I can hear his voice. Well, don't worry about me. Give him the message quickly, Algy, while the battery still works. Yes, Algy, I have that. We'll come out to look for you immediately. Neither of you move from your position until you hear our kites. Then light a smudge fire to show us where you are and wait for further instructions. Now, when I switch back to you, tell me if you've understood all that and pass on any other details you may have about your position. Reception's growing very bad. Over. Algy, are you still receiving me? 
If you are, acknowledge at once. Over. Well, that's all. His battery must have given out. But he gave you their position, didn't he, old trout? You seem to jot down an awful lot on that pad. I don't know his actual position. He doesn't himself. But he told me the, 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 the time he left Kampala, the direction of the wind, and his altitude when he crashed. We should be able to make something out of all that. Do you think so? Well, it doesn't mean much to me, Biggles. The altitude's the most important detail. They crashed amongst mountains well to the west of Latonga. As Algy was trying to fly south at the time, it's undoubtedly, well, well to the southwest. I'd say they're somewhere in the Ruanzori range. At what altitude? The altimeter's stuck at a little under 7,000 feet. So if we follow the 7,000 feet contour, sooner or later we should come to them. Well then, let's barely well follow it, old bean. We lissies are in our following mood. You know, Pat, we're lucky in a way. We could have landed in much worse spots than this. There's a darn good view from here. <laughs> so spoke he who wasn't interested in views. Oh, not because it's pretty to look at. But we can survey the country for miles round. That may be useful to us. Algy, you have no soul. I have a stomach, and it requires more to feed it than that bar of chocolate we found. Now, let's see where we are. Well, we're obviously on a plateau of some sort, and on the edge of forest country. A rainforest. That's the bit I don't like to look at. It spreads down the mountainside until it reaches that bright green strip at the bottom. I wonder what this is, Pat? The green strip? I've no idea. It stretches for miles, doesn't it? It doesn't seem to have any place down there. There's the forest this side of it, and the other side the grassland of the felt. I can't make out the green strip at all. Oh, look, Algy. There's one of the lakes way to the north. Doesn't it look lovely with the sun glinting on it? Oh, it'd look a darn sight lovelier if I knew which lake it was. I don't find that being lost on the side of a mountain gives me an eye for beauty. <laughs> you don't possess one anyway. All you care about are the facts and figures of the situation. What else is there to care about? Pat, there's a kite coming. Isn't that the mosquito? Might be. Got the matches ready? My word. I'll throw some oil on that pile of wood and you can set a light to it. This must be Biggles coming to look for us. There we are, old trout. There's smoke coming up from that ridge. That's it, Bertie. Is the parcel ready? Yes, we're catching it in our hot little hand, ready to toss out whenever we're over them. I'll scribble a note. And you can put it with the other things. Hand me the pad, will you? Here, old bean. Here we're right, Biggles. I can see them now. There's old Algy waving like Billio. And Pat, dear old Pat, she's there too. Got it, Algy. It's a parcel of food. Another odds in it. Is there any message in it? Just a second. Yes, here it is. A note from Biggles. Hey. Start walking down the mountain to the east. Keep heading in that direction and make for the open country of the plain. If you can't get through the forest by nightfall, light a fire to show us how far you've gone. If there's no fire, we'll take it you've met with an accident. Otherwise, we'll wait on the felt for you. Good luck, Biggles. Give him a wave, Pat. We're right. Well, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Now, the rainforests. Algy, I'll have to rest. This going's too hard for me. Oh, it's too hard for both of us, Pat. It's like pushing your way through a brick wall. And it's so hot. I don't know if I'll ever make the bottom. That's why they call it the rainforest. It's so damp and steamy. But we'll hit the plane eventually. Can we have a breather now, though? I honestly couldn't go on without a rest. Yes, but let's find somewhere more comfortable. Vegetation is so dense here, we can't even sit down. There's a little brook or water hole through there. Think you can make it? I think so. We can have some lunch there. 
That'll make us both feel better. A good scheme. I'll push through ahead of you. It'll make the going easier. Hold it, Pat. Why, can't we get through? Yes, but there's something already there. What do you mean? Look. A gorilla! I've never seen one outside a cage before. It doesn't look nearly so safe. He's seen it! And it's charging! Pat and Algy frantically look for a way of escape as a huge ape crashes towards them through the undergrowth. Can they avoid the charge? Will they be able to push through this terrible forest to meet Biggles? There'll be excitement and action in the next episode of The Air Adventures of Biggles. <laughs> Adventures of Biggles. Pat and Algy force their way through the unbelievable growth of the rainforest. The massive trees are linked with a nightmare tangle of vegetation. It resists their path, tears at them, clings to them, until their muscles ache and the perspiration streams from their bodies. At midday, they call a halt. Neither can go on without rest. They clamber across to a tiny brook, an oasis of beauty in the lush horror of the forest, planning to lunch there. But a huge figure rises from its haunches and lurches towards them. Algy and Pat are face to face with a hideous, snarling gorilla. Get back, Pat! Don't let cover! You, Algy, he's almost on you! I'll fix him! You missed, Algy! <laughs> what? He, he fell off! I hit him a couple of times. Must have scared him. But he was almost on top of me. I know. Maybe the pain of the shot startled him. Whatever it was, he, he's gone. Oh, Algy, Algy, you're shaking. I'll probably shake for months. I could feel his breath as I fired the last shot, and he touched me as he swung past. In future, I'll settle for gorillas behind bars. Come over to the brook. You're going to relax while I fix some lunch. Take it easily, and stop thinking about gorillas. Feel better? Oh, I'm fine now, Pat. The food made all the difference. Then can we push on? We don't waste any time if we're to meet Biggles before nightfall. No, by Jingo. There's still the dickens of a lot of forest. But what about you, Pat? You were the one who had done in. <laughs> Looking after you made me forget all about it. I could face 50 forests now. Come on. Keep still, Pat. I'll cut you out. I was swallowing right behind you. But when I ran into the vine, it seemed to twine itself around me. Almost as if it was alive. I'm not sure some of this undergrowth isn't alive. There. You're free now. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Algy. Yes, I can move now. <laughs> Hold it, Pat. It was a lion, wasn't it? Yes. Wait till I reload my rifle. Do you think it was close to us? No, but it was ahead. If we're going to pass through lion territory, I, I must be prepared. 
Lions usually live in more open country than this, don't they? I always thought they did. Then we must be near the edge of the forest. The dense part, anyway. I Jove, you may be right. Let's cut across the gully. I know it's steep, but the land falls away more gently on the other side. It may lead us to the low ground. Careful climbing up this side, Pat. It's down steep and there isn't much foothold. I'm watching where you go and using the same track. I don't know where I can go from here. Oh, wait a minute. There's a big log caught in a cliff. If I can get my hand to it... Be careful, Algie. It doesn't look safe. I can reach it. Now I'll swing myself. Oh, Pat! I'm here. Oh. Digging your feet, Algie, quickly. I'm slipping myself. Oh, I'm all right. I've got a grip now. Phew, if you hadn't caught me then, Pat, I'd have crashed to the bottom. I thought that log was rotten, so I braced myself to take your weight. Oh, thank goodness you did. Bless you. Don't worry about blessing me. Let's climb out of this awful gully and see what's on the other side. We're right, Pat. We're through the worst of it. Thank heaven. Algy, doesn't it look wonderful down there? <laughs> and I'm not talking about the pretty view. At least we can see where we're going now. About another mile to that strip of green, I should say. It wouldn't be any more. And through light timber. Pat, that green strip. I think I know what it is. It's certainly easier to see from down here. It's bamboo. There's a belt of bamboo running for miles along the foot of the mountains. Bamboo will be easy after that awful undergrowth. Isn't it wonderful, Algie? Once we're through that bamboo, we'll see Biggles again. Biggles? Yes, I wonder where old Biggles is now. We should see something of him soon. There's still no sign of them down there, Bertie. No, the poor old blighters must be stuck in that valley jungle. I hope they get through it, what? They will, but they won't do it in a hurry. Their only chance of crossing the forest quickly would be to find an animal track. And that could be dangerous. Oh, baked potatoes, yes. They might have to move aside to let a jolly old rhinoceros trundle past, what? Personally, I'd be more inclined to make my own path. The trouble is that even with a compass, they're likely to be forced well off their course. From the look of the slope, they may ooze to the north of this. And Ginger's up there in the Proctor. If they come out near him, he'll see them. I can't spot the old trout anywhere. Perhaps he's seen them and trundled down. Give him a call and ask him. No point in us scudding around if he's found them. This is Bertie calling Ginger. Bertie calling Ginger. Are you receiving, old sausage? Are you receiving, over? Ginger calling Bertie. Ginger calling Bertie. Receiving okay. Your voice sounds as ghastly as ever. Oh, I say. Had any luck yet? Over. No, not a skellic, old bean. Haven't seen the trout since they waffled into the forest. How about you? And no cracks about the Lissy voice, over. I've had no luck at all. I swung round the northern tip of the mountain to see if they're here, but there's no sign. Any instructions from Biggles? Oh, there's no need for cracks about the Lissy voice, by the way. It's full of cracks anyway. Over. He hasn't seen them yet, Biggles. Wants to know if you've any instructions, old sausage. Tell him to keep looking until six o'clock. Then he can put down at the rendezvous point, and we'll meet him when we've finished our recce. Roger. Bertie calling Ginger. The Lord and Master said to give them till six o'clock. If you haven't seen anything by then, try to put the kite down without pranging at the rendezvous point. We'll ooze in at about the same time and confer. Or rather, Biggles may confer with you. We Lissies intend to treat you with ignore. Over. Roger. Wilco, you always were an ignoramus. Out. No, oh, I say, that was dashed unfair. What was? The blighter cut me off in the middle of our conversation. I was going to point out that when we're a red-headed clot, it takes an ignoramus to bally well tame us. Oh, 
this bamboo is worse than the forest. I don't think we'll get through, Pat. We must go. It's almost dark. We know the planes are across the other side waiting for us. How about leaving until morning? We could go back and light a fire to let Biggles know we're close and then carry on when we're fresh. Do you want to spend a night in that forest? Well, no, but if we have a fire, we should be safe enough. It's not only the wild animals, it's the general eerie effect of the forest. Mm. What in the places was that? A buffalo. Aren't there buffaloes in this country? I think we might be in trouble. I'd rather face a gorilla than a wild buffalo. Ouchie, that buffalo was ahead of us. In the bamboo. A good reason for us to be out of it. But it must have pushed a path through. It may even be on a, a regular animal track. An animal track? We could follow an animal track. It'd take us right through the bamboo. No, not with the buffalo sharing it, thanks. You have your rifle, Algie. If we're careful, we'd be all right. Oh, please, let's try it. I'd rather risk the buffalo than spend the night in the forest. All right. We'll take it slowly, though. The sound seems to come from through here. Well, I'll be hanged. Have you found it? I found something. Come through. Algy, oh, it's a great tunnel. Yes. And doesn't run across the bamboo, but along the length of it. It must have taken an enormous herd of animals to force a path as wide as this. And yet, isn't it strange that the bamboo should still meet overhead? Not so strange if the tunnel was made by men, Pat. By men? Yes. I think I've guessed what this is. Animals come through here, but they aren't buffaloes. They're cattle. This is how the black elephant drove his cattle across Africa without being seen. <laughs> This weird, gloomy tunnel hidden within the bamboo belt would provide perfect cover for stolen cattle. Is Algy's guess right? Will they meet the black elephant and his men in the bamboo tunnel? Don't miss the thrills in the next episode of The Air Adventures of Big O. Adventures of Biggles. a long day, Pat and Algy wearily struggle against the dreadful undergrowth on the mountainside. Again and again it seems they can never reach the bottom. Sometimes it's Algy who cheers Pat along, and sometimes it's Pat who is the leader. Then the forest thins out and they see clearly what is ahead of them. Away from the foot of the mountain sweeps the felt in which Biggles will land his plane. But before this is a narrow strip of bamboo swamp which stretches as far as they can see from north to south. Daylight is dying when they reach the bamboo, but they still attempt to force their way through it. To their surprise, they break into a clearing sooner than they expected. But it isn't the felt. It is a completely enclosed tunnel. Algy starts as he guesses what it is. The black elephant and his men made it. This is how they drove their cattle across Africa without being seen. That's incredible, Algy. Is it? And what's this over here? Uh, no, don't go too close. It's a bit high. What is it? The carcass of a dead calf. The calf of an ordinary cow. Cattle have been through here. But it's right in the middle of the bamboo swamp. An ideal place for a hidden cattle track. Remember what we saw from up top? This belt of bamboo stretched as far as we could see, and it ran from south to north. It may stretch for hundreds of miles, perhaps thousands, along the foot of the mountains. Yes, but what I find hard to take is that they should make a tunnel like this. It's quite wide and about ten feet high. 
It's a be a terrific job, Algy. Not for a large group of men. These bamboo stalks aren't very thick. No, they've made it all right. See where I'm flashing the torch on the ground? Mm. Yes, the bamboos have been cut flush with the ground. There's no question of it, Pat. This is Seta Zulu's private cattle track. It's why no one's been able to spot him either from the air or the ground. Algy, Biggles must know about this as soon as possible. Yes. Although I don't know if we'll be able to tell him tonight. It'll be dark long before we can get through the bamboo. But we must try. Now we know about this, we'll be able to track down the black elephant and finish the job. All right, we'll see how we go. But if it's too thick, we're... Too late, Pat. Here comes Biggles now on his last recce. Oh, bother. Quickly, Algy, let's send up a smoke signal. Well, if he sees that, he'll think we're all right and not bother about us till morning. The black elephant's blokes will probably see it, too, and get to us before our fellows. Well, then what can we do? Ah, not a thing, Pat. We'll have to leave it to Biggles to make the decision. Can you see anything, Bertie? No, ah, not a belly sign, old sausage. When it's as dark as this, that belly forest just looks like a whopping great shadow. It's not completely dark. We'd see smoke if they lit a fire down there. Ah, no smoke, no fire, no movement, no nothing. A belly place is as dead as a sizzled sausage. They should have reached the bottom by now. They've been all day at it. Think something's gone wrong, old bean? It must have. Algy said he'd send up the smoke if they were okay. Oh, well, then it looks like a nasty, dirty, jolly old trundle through the forest by moonlight for us, what? No, not tonight. What? Make potatoes, old trout. If something's wrong, you aren't going to leave them down there without doing something. We'll do something in the morning. By Jingo, we won't. We'll do it now. I'll call up old Ginge, and I'll bet he waffles the same whiffle. You and Ginge can waffle as much as you like. We aren't going into that forest tonight. Ah, oh, but Biggles, old tyrant. Bertie, there are hundreds of square miles of that forest. Pat and Algy might be in any part of it. We wouldn't have a hope of finding them at night. We'd exhaust ourselves without achieving a darn thing. Seems a bit tough, old sausage. <laughs> tough, but sensible. We'll go back to Kampala for the night and be on the job again at dawn. Um, couldn't make it a couple of hours before, what? <laughs> dawn. Now contact Ginger and tell him to return to base. We shan't put down again. Oh, come along, Pat. Where, Algy? Back to the forest. No point in staying here. Except the Zulu's blokes may come along and nab us. Why not push on to the felt? We wouldn't make it for hours. And Biggles isn't going to put down, so he wouldn't gain anything. Sounds as if he's returning to Kampala. It's the only sensible thing to do. He'd never find us in the dark. Oh, that means another night in that awful forest. I'm afraid so, Pat. We'll find a safe spot and have a fire ready in case he does come over again. I'm terrified of that forest, Algy. Yes, I know. I don't like it much myself. But tonight we'll be resting in it, not fighting against it. Wake up. Bertie, wake up. Come on. Wake up, you clot. I thought you wanted to be away hours before dawn. Oh, yeah, but I, uh, what? Oh, sizzling sausages. Is it dawn already? It's four o'clock. Time for us to grab a cup of coffee and be on our way. It's ready now, Biggles. Good. And I fixed up some of those sizzled snags Bertie likes so much. Oh, by <laughs> Jove, bless you, my son. You'll be remembered in the Lissy will for this spot of nonsense. Now, you blokes ooze off and grab the grub, and I'll be with you as soon as I've dragged on a trouser. Right ho. Don't be long. Two toots of Harriet, that's all it takes, Toby. Biggles, any particular plan for today? Reconnaissance first. Then, if we have no luck, we'll put down and simply search for them where we judge they might be. That's the plan for Bertie and me. What do you mean? Aren't I coming with you? Well, it's about time someone put down at Latonga to see how Mishu's going. I want you to whip up there first, Ginge. 
When you're done, you can come on over the mountains. And help with the search, then? Well, you may not be able to find Bertie and me, but you'll see the kite. So put down beside it and wait. Do you want me to hang around at La Tonga? Or suppose Monsieur isn't there? Give him an hour or two, and if there's no word for him, well, come on. We'll send up another kite tomorrow. Oh, Roger. Uh, but you don't think pet and algae are more important than worrying about Monsieur? Everything's important on this stunt, so we have to follow up as many angles as we can at the same time. But I do agree that pet and algae are a little more important than anything else. They're coming, Pat. That's the mozzie again. Oh, thank goodness. I couldn't spend another night in this forest. We shouldn't have to now. I'll light the fire and the smoke will show them where we are. Algy, do you think it's wise? Last night we didn't light one in case the Black Elephant's men should see it. Well, I was awake half the night, Pat, and I didn't hear or see any sign of them. They might have been about yesterday, but I don't think they're anywhere near us now. All right. If you think it's safe... We'll have to do it. When Biggles knows our position, it'll be easier for us to contact each other. Yes. Yes, I think this should do the trick. There's uh, plenty of smoke going up. Yes. It could be seen for miles around. Biggles has seen it. We'd better go out into the clearing where he can see us. He's flying low, Algy. Almost touching the treetops. Probably going to drop a message for us. Yes, he spotted us. I can see someone waving. There it is, Pat. Something dropped. It's here in the bushes somewhere. I've got it. It's a cigarette tin. There'll be a note in it. See what he's written. Move three miles south. Swamp Narrows. We'll wait for you on far side. Bickles, that's clear enough, Algy. Yes, I'll wait him okay. Three miles? That'll take us a couple of hours. Yeah, about that. But we'll put out the fire before we start off. It hasn't done any damage so far, but we don't want it to attract attention all day. Oh, yes. Here, stamp it out. Yes. I'm nervous of that fire. Oh. Uh, that'll just about do it. Yes, it should do. Hmm. Well, let's push on. I've had enough of this place. Where are we heading, Algy? Down towards the bamboo. There's a patch of clear country this side. It'll be easier going down there. But we'll be in the open. Oh, it doesn't matter. There's no one to see us except the boys and the kite. I, I don't know. Algy, keep back. Why, what the... Look, coming from the bamboo. There are two natives... And they're heading for the fire. Set us Zulu's boys. They'll be looking for us. Pat and Algy press back out of sight of the natives. Can they escape without being seen? Or is the Black Elephant's gang close by? There'll be thrills and suspense in the next exciting chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. Adventures of Biggles.
After their second frightening night on the mountainside, Pat and Algy are eager to rejoin their friends. When they see the mosquito approaching, they don't hesitate to light a fire as a signal. A long column of smoke coils to the sky and is seen by Biggles. He drops a message telling Pat and Algy where the bamboo narrows some miles to the south and arranges to meet them there. As the castaway set off, they feel much more cheerful. Rescue at last is close. But suddenly, Pat pulls Algy back from sight. Two great natives push their way through the bamboo. They too have seen the smoke. Set a Zulu's men. They're making for the fire. They're looking for us. We shouldn't have lit the fire. Oh, don't worry about it now. We didn't know they were about. What do you think they'll do, Algy? Keep on looking for us. They'll go to the fire. When they find we've gone, they'll follow our trail. Oh, that won't be very difficult. We push th straight through the bushes. Yes, I know. Pat, there's a ledge of rock behind us. Think you can climb up there? I think so. Why? It seems to stretch a fair way. It may be a shelf running the full width of the mountain. If we walk along rock, we won't leave any tracks. And we'll throw the natives off our trail. Hurry, Algy. Let's climb up there. Be right, careful. Don't break any bushes or make it obvious we've headed this way. We'll let them follow the trail to here, and then wonder where the dickens we've gone. The ground's quite hard, but there are some dead leaves lying about. Watch those. And don't dislodge any stones. They'll look for that. We can climb up from here, Algy. I'll go first and give you a hand. <coughs> yeah. Righto. Take my hand, but try not to scrape your shoes against the rock. It may leave a mark. I'll watch it. Well, up you come. Uh, uh, <coughs> are you right now? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I want to get away from here as quickly as I can. The natives must be close. We'll be quick, but be careful at the same time, Pat. Every time you put your foot down, see that it leaves no mark. That's the spot down there, isn't it, old trout? Yes. But we shan't put down yet. Why not? No need to waffle about in the jolly old ozone now that we've found the sausages, is there? I want to see they don't come to any harm. We lissies can't see them at all now. They sort of ooze into the old jungle, and that was that. They're down near the edge of the forest somewhere. But as we swung away from them, I thought I saw some movement near the bamboo. I didn't see anything. Haven't seen a living belly sausage apart from Pat and Algy all morning. And apart from old Ginge burbling up to Matonga, of course. When I looked back, I couldn't see, see anything myself. But I don't like the idea of anyone else being down there. Well, we Lissy shouldn't worry about it, uh, were we you, old Bean? I mean to say the jolly old forest is positively teeming with wildlife and all that sort of nonsense. What you saw was probably a giggling gazelle gurgling through the grass. <laughs> it could have been an animal of some sort. But we'll scout around for an hour or so just the same. It'll take them well over an hour to reach the rendezvous. Yes, by Jove, it will. You know, old Ginge might burble along before the old trouts turn up after all. Yes, he might. It depends what happens at Latonga. It's our job to pull Pat and Algy out of their strife. Latonga's Ginger's main concern. <laughs> Headman, Glatonga. Boy say Buana want headman. Uh, yes, I do. I've come to Latonga to meet the Maasai, Michu. You know Michu? Do you know Michu? Yes, Buana. No, Michu. Well, where is he? Not know. But you knew he was in the district, didn't you? Come on, answer me. Yes, Buana. Well, where is he now? If you knew he'd arrived here a couple of days ago, you, you must know what happened to him. No, not no. And now, don't be ridiculous. It isn't every day of the week a Maasai warrior lands here in a plane. I'll bet every native of your village was out to see. We see Monsieur come. Well, then what did he do after that? He isn't the type to disappear. He, he stay one night. Then go. Go? Where? 
What? No. Ah, oh, don't start that business again. You fellows know everything that's going on for hundreds of miles around your kraals. Didn't he say where he was going? No, Buana. Did any of your men follow him? No, not follow. All right, then. You'll at least be able to guess what he was up to. Where do you think he went? Maybe hunt animals. Maybe go back to own car. Me not know. Oh, well, if that's all you'll say, I suppose I'll have to accept it. Uh, when you go now, fly away like you come. Hmm? You seem very keen for me to go. When I go, when I stay. Me happy. I think Buana will stay for a while. And I want you to do something for me. Yes, Buana? Ask your villagers if they have any idea where Mishu went. If anyone knows anything, send him over to me. I'll be in the white man's rest hut by the airstrip. Yes, Buana. And don't try any funny business. Mishu's a friend of mine. I won't be pleased if anything's happened to him. Perfectly clear, old trout. No stones or gullies or anything like that. But um, when you put down, you'll be most awfully careful to dodge that hill in front, won't you? I'll try, Bertie. I mean to say, we lissies have a profound belly dislike for scabbing our noses on hills when we put down in kites. <laughs> we Bigglesworths shall do our best to cause you no discomfort. I shouldn't worry. Plenty of flat ground. We'll have stopped before we reach the hill. Now hold on to your teeth. Now, this'll do. Hop out and we'll survey the ground. Why, well, say, aren't you going to turn around? You won't take off up the side of that valley hill, you know. Oh, forget about the darned hill. I'll turn the kite when Pat and Algy are safely aboard and we're ready to go. Open the hatch. Well, no need to be terse, old bean. I always think you're worse when you're terse. We'll climb the hill, Bertie. From the top of it, we'll have a good view across the bamboo. We'll be able to see when Pat and Algy are coming. We'll hold it here for a moment, Pat. If we push through the bushes a bit, we should be able to see down to the bamboo. Do you think we've come three miles? Oh, it feels like 30, but I'd say we're about right. We'll have a squint anyway. Yes. Yes, there's the narrow strip below us. And there's Biggles. I think it's Biggles. There are two of them on that small hill across the other side. The big bloke's Biggles and... and Bertie. It's Bertie. I saw his monocle flash in the sun. We're right, Algy. It's all over. We can almost shout to them from here. Don't you try. I think we tossed those natives, but we aren't giving any more signals. Well, there's no need now. We simply push through the bamboo, and there we are. Then let's start pushing. I've taken a dislike to this forest, and I want to get out of it. Wait, Algy. I'm more tired than I thought. I'll have to rest. Uh, yes, I need to rest myself. This confounded swamp's heavy going. It's much worse than higher up. I feel as if I'll sink to my knees at any moment. Oh, don't do that. We don't want to be bogged down at this stage. Strange that we haven't come across the tunnel yet. We must be close to it. And surely the ground will be firmer there. With all the cattle around. Elgie. Quiet, Pat. We are close to the tunnel. Yes. That sounded like someone calling, quietly. Do you think they've seen us? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Be careful, Algy. Don't let them hear you. I won't make much noise. Here. 
Yes. Drop that gear and come back to the forest. Why? Can't we get through? It isn't that. The gang's in there. The black elephant's with them. Have they seen us? No, but they've seen Biggles and Bertie. They're lining up against the other side of the bamboo now. They're going to attack. <laughs> Biggles and Bertie have no suspicion that the black elephant is near. Will they be overpowered? How can their friends help them? Don't miss the thrills in the next stirring chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. of Biggles. Algae move cautiously along the base of the mountain until they reach an elevated position above the narrow portion of bamboo swamp. It seems their troubles are over because little more than half a mile away on a low hill they see Biggles and Bertie lazing in the sun while they wait. But between the two groups of flyers is still that difficult strip of bamboo. Quickly and cheerfully now Pat and Algae strike into it from the mountainside. But before they've gone far they halt tense and alert. There are low voices ahead probably in the concealed tunnel. Algy makes a swift reconnaissance and then hurries back to Pat. Setazulu and his men are in the tunnel. They're lining up to attack Biggles and Bertie. There's a big bird in a leopard skin directing them. Must be Setazulu. We'll have him ready in a few minutes. Biggles and Bertie will be killed. They aren't expecting an attack. We'll warn them. Drop all that gear and come back to the forest. What can we do? We'll push back to that high ground where we saw the blokes from before. I'll send a rifle shot across to put them on their guard. Mm, that'll do it. But we must hurry, Algy. Otherwise, the black elephant will move first. Oh, very pleasing, Miss Elbean. Very pleasing indeed. If it weren't for that faintest touch of worry about young Patricia and the aged Algernon, one could thoroughly enjoy squatting here in the sun, what? You can sunbake when you get back to England. We are here to keep our eyes open. Oh, never fear, old trout, never fear. The lissy orbs are flapping wildly. But we don't see why we shouldn't enjoy the jolly old situation, notwithstanding. I mean to say, it'll only be a matter of moments before the old lobsters trundle forth. And then... Uh, sizzling sausages. Down, buddy, get aground. Why, nearly six feet under it already, old bean. Now, where did that come from? I don't know where it came from, but it landed mighty close to the lissy ear, by Joe. I think it was the mountainside, the lower slopes. The, the mountain be blowed. Look, they're coming from that bamboo. Bertie... Ease back. Fake potatoes. Natives. Yes, sneaking out from the bamboo. They're coming for us. So work your way back over the hill. Oh, it's a bit difficult, old bean. The old stomach's pressed hard to the sward. Don't stand up, but wriggle back as quickly as you can. By Jove, I, I say, Biggles, some of those shots are coming mighty belly close. They know where we are. But we are reasonably safe while we keep moving back under cover of a long rot. <laughs> safe, eh? Think again, old bean. They're charging. All right. We're over the crest. Run for it. Back to the kite as fast as we can go. <coughs> Biggles. Biggles, we won't, won't do it. Do what? Take off in the kite. It's still pointing bang at the hill. There'll be no time to turn it round. I don't want to turn it. It'll do very well as it is. Yes, but hang it all, old beam. Save your breath. Just worry about getting down to the plane. <coughs> Here we are. Hop in, buddy. Don't worry about the hatch. Sir. I'm belly worried about those blighters coming over the hill. And they're over now. Look! That's almost where I want them. Wait till I'm comfortably in my seat. Sizzling sausages. You're going for the machine gun. Yes, the Brownings. That trained on the hill. 
And those swine can taste all four of them. It's the Browning Belgie. The mosquito's gun. The kite must be parked beyond that hill. Keep well down, Pat. Some of the bullets are coming this way. Belgie, look. The natives are streaming back over the hill. By Jingo, yes. It's done the trick. They're bolting. Think we're safe here? Should be. I doubt if they'll come beyond the bamboo. They'll make for the tunnel and escape along that. I can't understand how it all happened. Surely Biggles wouldn't have had the mosquito's guns trained on the hill, waiting for an attack. You never know. It's possible he just ran the kite to the foot of the hill and left it there. Then the guns would have been trained on the side of it automatically. If they drove off the natives, that's all that matters. Mm. So, sounds as if they're taking off. They wouldn't leave us here, Algy. I shouldn't think so, but that's the mozzie starting up. We must go over to the felt, Algy. They'll see us there. We can't, Pat. The black elephant and his blokes are still in the bamboo. But if Biggles flies away, we'll be... There he goes. He is going away. No, he's circling. He's swinging back this way. Still turning. Along the bamboo, don't you see? He's going to strike the blighters in the bamboo. Funny. He dived, but he didn't use his guns. Now he's circling back again. I know what he's doing. He's diving on the bamboo to frighten the natives. We'll frighten them more if he used his guns. He's dead. How does he know we aren't in the bamboo? He's doing this to scare away the natives and give us the chance to go across. Here he comes again. That's our cue to escape, Pat. Let's take it. seeing you here. I say, who's that grubby-looking tramp you've dragged along with you? That's enough from you, Clot. Any more cracks and I won't be so careful next time I aim a shot near your elbow. What shot? Algy fired the first shot in the battle you had with the natives. It was a warning for you to be on guard. He fired that? You clumsy belly lobster, Algy. That went so close it made me drop my belly eyeglass. I'll have you know that... Yes, and we'll have you cut the cackle, Bertie. <laughs> Oh, that was good work, Algy. You saved our lives. I was tempted to let them have a pot at Bertie, but my better nature took over. Hope everything went all right with you, Biggles. Yes, perfectly. We were lucky to have the kite in a position where we could train the Brownings on the natives. Now, what about you two? You look done in. Oh, we're tired, but there's nothing wrong with us that some food and hot coffee won't fix. There's a thermos and some grub in the kite. Bring it out, will you, Bertie? I want to hear Algy's story. Roger, Albine. But uh, keep the juicy bits till I get back, Algy. Mustn't miss those, what? When I hear Bertie burping like that, I know I'm safe again. <laughs> Where's Ginger, Biggles? I'm not too sure. I shot him up to Latonga to check on Mishu. But he should have caught up with us by now. However, he's probably waiting for us at Kampala. Now, tell me what happened, Algy. Right from the moment you took off with Mishu. This is G56834 calling Kampala. G56834, Air Constable Hebblethwaite, calling Kampala. Are you receiving? Over. Kampala Control, calling G56834. Receiving, okay. Proceed, Air Constable Hebblethwaite. Over. I've taken up the proctor so that I can send through this message. But when I've finished, I'm putting back to Latonga. Please pass on the information to Inspector Bigglesworth. Tell him I'm staying at Latonga until tomorrow morning, so there's no need for him to worry about me. That is all. Is the message clear? Over. Tell Inspector Bigglesworth that you're returning to Latonga and staying until tomorrow morning. He is not to worry. 
then, when we saw you diving on the natives, we ducked through the bamboo and across here. We waited until you put down again. And uh, that's the full story. Actually, we didn't even see the natives after they disappeared into the bamboo. We simply dived on it, hoping they were still there. The blighters must have been tearing along that belly tunnel. I say, that's a nifty little setup. What? We feel the tunnel's the most important discovery we've made yet. That's how the black elephant moves his cattle to the north without being seen. Yes, and who'd have dreamed the belly thing was there? I mean to say, even through the lissy monocle, that just looks like an ordinary belt of bamboo. There's a kite coming. Yes, yeah, a little puss moth. Haven't seen anything as small as that around Kampala. He's flying low, too. Seems to be searching for something. Oh, the poor old sausage won't find anything interesting about here, what? There they are. What the places? It's the black elephant's men. They're shooting from the bamboo. Not at us. They're shooting at that kite. And they'll hit him. He's right above them now, so they'll hit him for sure. <laughs> Flyers are on their feet watching anxiously as a small plane flies through the rifle fire. Who is the strange pilot? Will he survive this attack? Listen again for thrills and suspense in the next exciting chapter of The Air Adventures of Big O. Adventures of Biggles. <laughs> Refreshed by hot coffee and food. Pat and Algie sit by the mosquito and tell Biggles and Bertie their adventures. They feel relaxed and safe when a small plane is seen approaching from the north. It is a puss moth, a private machine, and it is flying low, as if the pilot were inspecting the ground. When it is still a couple of miles away, there is a clatter of rifle shots. The plane is being menaced from the ground. It's the black elephant's men. They're shooting from the bamboo, right below the plane. If that fluke doesn't climb, they'll shoot him down. We'll take up the mozzie. Wouldn't be time. Either he'll come through, or he'll have had it within a couple of minutes. He's climbing now. He must have noticed the shooting. He'll be out of it in a minute. No! No, they've hit him! Baked potatoes! He's in a spin! He'll never pull out of that! Come on, into the mosque, all of you. We're going to get those swine. This is about the spot. Pray. Again, Biggles. I intend to. That was cold-blooded murder. I've been a plaster this bamboo until I've used every round of ammunition. You're forgiving the pilot, Biggles. What's that? The pilot of the moth. He may be still alive. I don't think so. She's a mess, that kite. Even so, Pat's right. I'd like to plaster those devils, but these other chaps come first. We'll put down. Will it be safe, old bean? I mean to say, suppose the black elephants fly this ever potted us. <laughs> After that last burst, I shouldn't think they'd stay to potted anything. We'll risk it. I'm going to land beside that wreck.
careful with him. Move that junk aside, Bertie. Uh, Roger, OB. Uh, uh. Right, Algie. Put him down. Can I do anything? No one can help him now, Pat. He was killed instantly before the plane crashed. How do you know? Haven't you noticed the bullet wound in his head? But he could have landed that at any time. No. To the back of the skull and the bullet went in in an acute angle. It was fired from below and came up through the plane. One of those lucky shots that often bring down a kite. That's probably why he pranged. I should say so. However, the kite's in such a mess, no one will ever know if it was by rifle fire. Pat, you and Bertie can go through the wreckage for documents, maps and that sort of thing. All right, Biggles. There's been no fire, so if he was carrying anything, we should find it. Are we going to search him? Yes, that's why I sent Pat away. Not a pleasant job, but we must identify him. Then we'll hit back to Kampala after a rather hectic morning's work. I picked up the dope on the pilot, Biggles. It ties in with the papers he was carrying in his wallet. Oh, they didn't tell us much. Just as he was Bruce Allen, a university student from Edinburgh. He arrived here this morning, shortly after you blokes took off. He was looking for his father. Why? Is he out here somewhere? He was, about six months ago. The father was Dr. Allen, a well-known botanist. Dr. Allen? There was something about him in the papers a few months ago. Yes, he led an expedition up Mount Ruwenzori, searching for some rare plants which he believed he might find there. You're talking as if the old chap's dead, old bean. He almost certainly is. After he'd passed the permanent snow line on the mountain, his native bearers deserted him. And he carried on by himself. He hasn't been heard of since. Who brought back the report about the natives? They did themselves. They said they couldn't stand the cold up there. The police here at Kampala questioned them and sent up a search party. But they didn't find any trace of the old man. They've officially given him up for dead. Why? If they didn't find the body? The sergeant said no man by himself could survive the conditions high up on the mountain. Nor could he survive an attack by treacherous natives. But go on, Algie. I take it young Bruce Allen didn't accept the verdict? No. He hired that little moth and came out to make an aerial search. The airport officials told him you were in the vicinity of the mountains, so he may have been looking for you when he was killed. Murdered? Killed is too soft a word for that butchery. Yes, the Allen family didn't have much luck with Africa. It proved tragic for both of them. Pickles, old bean, don't you think the old doctor bloke was lost in the snow country? There's no question that he was lost up there but I think it may have been at the hands of his native bearers. Why should they kill him? For the same reason the black elephant kills, for loot. Dr. Allen would have been carrying a good deal of valuable equipment. Shrewd natives would realize that. And if they were unscrupulous, they wouldn't he hesitate to kill for it. Oh, but hang it all, they wouldn't dare snuffle a white man, would they? Not ordinary native bearers. Since Seta Zulu started his raiding up and down the country, apparently quite a few of the natives have been indulging in petty outlawry when they feel they can get away with it. And those boys way up on Mount Ruanzori would have had every opportunity to get away with it. So, in a way, both murders can be put down to the black elephant. Quite possibly. We saw him commit one of them, so at least we can get him for that. The question is, old sausage, how? All we know is that he disappeared into the Bally Bamboo. And that Bally strip trundles south for about 300 miles and north for about another 100. The black elephant and his boys might be anywhere in the jolly old nonsense. We know more than that. About the only good thing to come out of Bruce Allen's death was that it proved that the gang was heading north. That's right. The shooting came from well to the north of the point where they disappeared. That's the direction they're heading. And they'll keep heading that way until we stop them. I'm a bit with Bertie. How are we going to do it? I'm... I'm not sure yet. And I'm not going to try and work it out tonight. We'll wait until Ginger, Ginger comes in tomorrow. He may have news that will change our ideas. I say, you don't suppose anything's happened to the old trout? Surely it wouldn't take him until tomorrow to have words with Mishu, what? Well, his signal said he'd be back tomorrow. Now, we're all done in after today's effort, so I suggest we have some sleep. And don't let worries about Ginge keep you awake. He can look after himself as well as any of you. Wow. 
Why not? Me sure. Uh, just a sec, I'll light the lamp. No. No light. And Buana not talk loud. Well, why not? This is the rest hut. There's no need for secrecy here. We don't keep quiet, Buana. Native from Kral hear us come to see. Oh, I'll soon send them off if they do. You aren't frightened of the local natives, are you, Michu? Michu Masai warrior. No native frightened, Michu. But it better they not see him here. Uh, perhaps you'd better tell me what's going on. Native in Latonga Kral, not good native. Michu know this. They know Michu one time work for government. They not like him. Oh, but they, they wouldn't harm you. They know you're working for us. They try to stop me see you. Michu know. He lie in grass and hear native talk of this. Why are they trying to stop you from seeing me? Because I tell you of dead man. What dead man is this? Dead white man. Men of Bungoro tribe find body. They bury him so hyenas not eat him. This they tell Michu. Michu come back, Latonga tell Buana. And the Latonga boys didn't want you to tell me. I wonder why. Michu not know. But he hear them say they kill Michu when they find him. Well, don't worry. I shan't let them do that. Michu not let them do that. But he see Buana first. Yes, that was wise of you, Michu. Uh, do you know anything more about this white man? Who he was or, or where the body was found? Not know who he was, but Michu take you to the body. Oh, good man. Uh, is it far from here? To the north, near Sudan. Maybe one day. A day's march? Hmm. Still, it won't take us long by plane. Uh, can you guide me to it by air? Uh, that in dark. We'll leave it till just before dawn. Then it'll be daylight by the time we hit up towards the Sudan border. That suit you? Yes, Buana. Me shall go back to forest. Wait that till dawn. Not on your life. You'll stay here in the rest hut with me. It's more comfortable. But men from Kral. Uh, they don't know you're here. And they wouldn't dare to touch you. Uh, you turn in on that bunk by the door. Uh, we'll be right here until morning. Buana. You sleep, Buana. Huh? Shh. Huh? Not talk loud. They hear. Huh? What's going on? Who'll hear? Men from Kral. They come while we sleep. Soon they come into hut to kill. The actions of the Latonga natives are both mysterious and sinister. Why should they plan to harm Ginger and Mishu? And who is the white man who has been found dead near the Sudan border? There'll be thrills and drama in the next gripping episode of... The Air Adventures of Biggles. of Biggles. It is night when Mishu returns to the government rest hut at Latonga. He is well and full of news, but he completely mystifies Ginge by his furtive manner. He has heard of a white man who was killed in the country near the Sudan border. For some reason, the Latonga native didn't wish him to pass on this information to his white friends, and Mishu is endangering his life by visiting Ginge in the rest hut. Despite this threat, Ginger plans to fly to the border country at dawn. He has been asleep for some hours when Mishu again wakes him. Masai is tense and excited as he whispers that danger is close. Men from Kral, they come while we sleep. Soon they come into hut to kill. 
How do you know? Did you hear them? Mishu not hear. Mishu no. Oh, rot. Oh, speak loud, Banner. They're here. Outside door now. Uh, well, there's no need to wave your assegai on my face. The door's ajar. I'll see whether you're imagining this or not. Want to take gun? Oh, yes. I have my gun. You keep perfectly still while I move across. Mishu not move. All right, monsieur. There are three of them out there, and they're carrying spears. I come to kill, but miss shall kill first. Calm down. We must plan this. Three men. We fight and kill three men. Easy. If I used my gun, it would be easy, but better make a noise. We don't want the entire village on the scene. Have you any weapons apart from that assegai? Club. Miss shall all time carry club. That's exactly what we want. And I'll use the butt of my pistol. We'll try to clean them up without much noise. Shh. Ready? Into the machine! Give him the works! <laughs> the third bloke, he's bolting after him! Miss shall get him! Miss shall get us a guy. One away. Well, did you notice any movement from the village? No. Village quiet. Good. How's the bloke out there? He die. All die when Misho throw us a guy. These two blokes are out to it. The fellow you crack with your club will have a split head for months. Why, him not die? I hit them again. No, no. There's been enough bloodletting for one night. We don't want to kill them. We just want to see they don't kill us. Oh, they have not killed tonight. Now we wait. They wake up, we hit them on the head again. We shan't be here when they come to. It's four o'clock. Dawn will be breaking soon. Are we go now, Buena? Yes, it'll be daylight by the time we reach the border country. We'll take off as soon as I've scribbled a note for Biggles. Uh, light a match for me, will you, Monsieur? There's a box on the table beside you. Yes, Buena. A short note's all we need. Yes, sir. Right. Well, that'll do. Yeah, Monsieur, after we've gone... Are these local natives likely to ransack the hut? Oh, no, this government house. Natives not touch government house. Uh, all the same, I'd I better not leave the note lying around. Ah, this'll do. I'll leave the end sticking out of a book and put the book on the table by the bed. There, Biggles will find that. Better we go now, Buana. So another native come from village, maybe. Well, when they come, they can take these bodies away with them. Uh, lug them outside, Michu. Then we'll take off to investigate that other mysterious body of yours. How long do you intend to wait for Ginger Biggles? He said he'd be back this morning, so I should think he'd take off soon after daylight. Well, then he should have trundled along by now, what? Well, give him another few minutes. He may have been delayed. He slept in, that's what. If that measly blighter tells me I've been jittering away here for Bally Hour simply because he slept in, I'll singe his red belly hair. Aren't you making any plan at all until Ginge turns up, Biggles? Oh, by Jove, yes. Must do something, old bean. Ginge or no jolly Ginge. What can we do while the Black Elephant and his gang are hiding in those infernal bamboos? The trouble is, we don't know how far the secret track goes. I'd say it goes right to the northern limit of the bamboos. And that's another hundred miles. Couldn't we set fire to the beastly stuff and burn the blighters out? It wouldn't burn. It's too green and lush. And there's swamp at the bottom. Uh, there's one thing we could do, Biggles. Hmm. Follow them along the tunnel on foot. We'd catch up with them that way. We'd catch up with them, and that would be the end of us. Uh, the, the gang's too big for direct methods of that sort, Alger. It was a cunning move of Setazulu's to build that tunnel. It'd need a small army to flush him out of it. Well, baked potatoes, aren't we worth about 15 belly armies? There must be some way we can tackle the blighter. We'll think of some way eventually. And in the meantime, the black elephant will go on killing innocent people. Do you suppose I don't realize that, Pat? But he's a cunning devil. And he's backed by a powerful force. Surely we can match his cunning? Perhaps we can. But we've only the mobility of our planes to pit against the strength of his gang. We must wait for the right moment to use that mobility to the greatest effect. The problem's like those bamboos. Messy and darned hard to get through. Ginge may bring back news that'll help us. He's obviously discovered something up at Latonga. 
Biggles, we've waited long enough, haven't we? If anything's gone wrong with the old trout, this nestling around in circles won't help him. It's not helping us either. Algie, you and Bertie take the mossy and hop up to Latonga. Some direct action might clear your heads and give you an inspiration. I'm beginning to think we'll need an inspiration to trap the black elephant. There's the Tonga, that rough strip by the native kraal. There's no kite down there. We must have missed the old sausage. And that's possible. He may be back at Kampala by now. But you're not going to turn back, are you? No fear. Not until we've had a look down below. Everything's probably quite okay, but we'll make sure. Algae, old trout. There are some natives watching us from the kraal. Do they look frightfully pally to you? Yeah, not particularly. But they weren't very friendly when Pat and I put in here before. They kept their distance and glowered at us as they're doing now. But, but don't worry about them. They wouldn't dare to harm a white man. Oh, we, Lissy, sincerely hope not, old bean. We have a profound dislike for assegais tickling our funny bones. If there's no message in the hut, we'll have a word with them afterwards. Well, this is the place I was telling you about. Pat and I had tea here with that bloke Simmons. The ranger, Walla? Mm -hmm. Wonder what happened to him? Oh, he's probably off in the jungle somewhere. He was hunting for a man-eating leopard that's supposed to be menacing the district. Oh, I say, glowering natives, man-eating leopards. Pleasant little spot, Latonga, when you come to analyse it. That's all right. Now, here's the hut. We'll see if Ginge left a note for us. I say, there's been a spot of nonsense going on in here, what? Looks as if the last heavyweight championship was staged in the belly joint. This has been a blue of some sort. I hope Ginger's all right. Scout round for a note, Bertie. I don't like the look of this. Baked potatoes? There's blood on the floor. Must have been some stoush while it lasted. Grab that book by the bed. There's a piece of paper sticking out of it. This is it. It's a note for Biggles. What's it say? Am on to the trail of a mystery. Mishu is with me, so don't worry. Give me another 24 hours and I'll tell you all about it. Cheers, Jin. Has he put a date on it? Today. That means he wants us to keep guessing until tomorrow. Confound the old sausage. Why didn't he tell us where he was going? We may not have had the chance, particularly if this blue occurred anywhere near the time he was leaving. I say, how about questioning the natives about this little fracas? They might be able to give us a lead to old Jin. Oh, I doubt it. They're merely local villagers. I shouldn't think they'd have anything to do with it. We'll take Ginger to his word, Bertie. He knows what he's doing, so we'll let him get on with it and chase him up again tomorrow. How much further, Michu? We're moving a fair way from the plain. Little way, Nabwana. Bangoro man say we find open part of forest. There they bury a white man. Hello, there's a clearing ahead, I think. Yes, through there. We, we'll see if that's it. Ah, we find them, Bwana. Man of earth. That where Bangoro bury a white man. Well... This is going to be a horrible job. But I'm afraid we'll have to dig away that earth. We must find out who the white man is. Let's get it over, Michel. There's no identification. Whoever killed the poor devil must have gone through his pockets. They've stripped him of everything. Michel know him. What's that? Michel know him. See him dead. One algae take him in aeroplane to Natonga. White man there, Juan Algi, Miss Pat, they talk to him. His name's Simmons. Simmons? I'll ask Algy about him when we get back. The next question is, who fired that bullet through his head? White man fire bullet. White man? You mean Simmons himself? No. Juan Simmons killed by other white man. Miss you no. <laughs> Thank you. 
Michu stares closely at the body of the game ranger Simmons and then at the surrounding ground. Why is he so sure that a white man committed the murder? Will this crime lead the flyers to the black elephant? Listen for the thrills in the next exciting chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.